Okay, so I am wrapping up the final wrap up of this bathroom remodel project and I've got some information with you that I wanted to share. First of all, the project uh, took me about four months to work on it in my spare time. Uh, that's one thing. Also, I recorded how many hours each section worked on. Now, before I get to the hours, let's talk about the price. My labor was just my labor, so let's just say there's no charge for the labor. For the materials, materials was somewhere between $2,500 and $3,000, and that included tools and so forth. When I bought my stuff, I, uh, I put all my receipts in, a, in, a, in like a shoebox, and I, had a, I must have went to the Home Depot a thousand times for this project. Um, now let's talk about the hours. Um, the amount of hours that I put into this project, let me tell you. Okay, so I broke it down into sections. So for the first section, which was the demo, I put in 8.75 hours. For the next section, which was planning the project, that was about 10 hours I put into the sitting down, figuring out what I was going to put in and install in the project. Uh, part three, which was the uh, duct and light move before there was the wall that came down. I had to bring that up and, and uh, also the light fixture that's right there behind me. It used to sit uh, lower by, I don't know, 14 inches or so, and I brought that up. That portion of the uh, project took 2.5 hours. Then after that, <clears throat> part four was the uh, bathtub surround and wall prep. That portion took 21 hours. Let me turn the camera around. Okay, so that is for getting this, uh, not, th that's just prepping the wall, do, uh, you know, getting it ready for the, uh, the cement board underlayment. That took me 21 hours. Uh, and the installation of the cement board underlayment took me 24 hours. Uh, after that, I worked on the actual tile installation. Uh, the tile and the grout took me 68.5 hours. So that took me the longest, 68.5 hours. Uh, what else? The, then once I got done with that, then the ceiling and the walls, taping the joints and uh, coating with a joint compound and doing all my wall prep like that, that took me 20 hours. Then I worked on the texturing the walls and then priming and painting the walls. That took me 29 hours. Um, after that, I worked on the um, rotted subfloor and uh, they got the toilet uh, get the toilet pack ready for the flange. That took me 3.75 hours. Then in part 10, installing the floor underlayment and the new sheet vinyl floor and baseboard, that took me 20 hours. Oh, by the way, one thing about that, I was thinking about that in retrospect, if you saw that particular part, that's part number 10 in my series here. What I did was is I skim coated it and then I let it dry. What I probably could have done is I could have skim coated it and then while it was wet, laid in that sheet of um, plywood and that would have adhered that plywood directly to the floor. That probably would have been a better technique than the way that I did it, which was to let it dry. Um, so uh, this is this uh, follow-up right now is also a lessons learned. I'll go over a few other things in, in a minute, but while I was on this section that just came to mind immediately. Probably should have uh, 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 leveled it at, well, put the put the thin set down while it was wet. Just worked in one square at a time, one four foot section at a time. Have everything pre cut, pre measured, pre cut, and everything everything fit right. Just pencil it out and then put my wet mortar down and then lay it down. Probably I wouldn't have had to nail it down or anything. It'd be glued right to the uh, to the uh, to the subfloor. So the floor underlayment would be glued right to the subfloor. Probably would have been a better technique. I didn't do that, and I probably should have. Uh, what else? Uh, that was the floor underlayment. After the floor underlayment was installing the, um, uh, so, the 
So installing the floor underlayment and the new sheet vinyl floor and the baseboard took me 20 hours. I told you that. Then in step 11, install the new vanity and the medicine cabinet. That took me 15 hours. Now I did have a problem with my medicine cabinet. Let me spin around here. Okay, so you see here, let me just adjust these legs a little. So right down here is the, the new vanity that you saw on the, uh, the install. There's the medicine cabinet. Technically, this medicine cabinet is my second one. The first one, I installed the medicine cabinet and then in this door here, the third door over, when I was cleaning everything up, at, when I was done with the installation, there was a scratch in the door. And so I had to return that whole cabinet to the Home Depot and just basically do an exchange for a brand, for a brand new one. Um, they changed the model ever so slightly so that I couldn't just take out the door and just do an exchange on the door. I actually had to do an exchange on the whole cabinet. So this cabinet here is actually a, um, a brand new cabinet. If, uh, if you saw the installation, um, I'm not sure, I can't remember actually on the installation video, but on the installation video on the first one, this one here, let me just zoom that in so you can see that. This section right here did not have this, this ribbed panel joint. It only had that up at the uh, top section, which this one still does up at the top, but this particular cabinet has it at the top and bottom. And that is because I had to change out the entire cabinet because of that scratch. So what I did was, when I got this new cabinet and I unboxed it in my garage, I immediately cleaned it and made sure that the, all the glass and everything was flawless before I went and did the installation because I didn't want to go through the same trouble of doing a full-blown install and then winding up with the material defect that I didn't want to live with. Okay, so that, that's that. Um, okay, what else? Hang on, I was taking, I made my notes here. Uh, okay, so uh, next step, part number 12, was install the new Glacier Bay toilet. That took me 2.75 hours to put that in. Um, what else? The uh, towel bars. 2.75 hours to put in the towel bars and the, uh, the, the trim, which includes the uh, toilet paper holder, which is right there, as well as this uh, towel uh, hanger here. When I did it before, you didn't see the door. So here's the door installed and it clears it. You can see right there how much it uh, clears it. Not, not by much, it's tight, but there, it, that's, at least it's not hitting the door. Okay, so that's on that. Uh, what else do I have to, to go over? Let me just double check here. Uh, okay, so and uh, now I'm also, and then before this little video segment, I did the before and after pictures so that you could see that. Um, and then there's two other additional videos with this. I did a review of the QEP 650 XT wet towel saw. That was the first wet towel saw that I purchased because I was trying to get out of this. This could just be one and done. When you're one and done, one bathroom remodel and you're done, one and done. When you're one and done, you want to keep your tool costs down. Uh, so, and this may be a one and done for me. I don't know. Well, I'm not sure how far I'm going to take uh, remodeling. There's only so many bathrooms in, you know, that I'm going to come across and storage and all that. So I wanted to see how small I could keep it. And when I, when I first did my, re, my, uh, my research, I mean, it looked like a decent saw. And it actually is a good saw, like the saw. Um, the problem is, is my tile for my installation being 12 by 24 was too, a little bit, it was too large to be like extremely accurate with that saw. That's why I returned it and I got the $300 rigid saw. In retrospect, with the 12 by 24 inch tile and to do the cuts that I wanted to do, I would recommend going 
especially with my tile. My tile was a, it is a porcelain tile and I bought this specific tile because it resembled the tile that we have in the first level and I uh, like I was trying to have some type of continuity um, we have in the first level it's a marble creme marfel six dollars and fifty cents a square foot uh, which looks beautiful but because it's a marble and because marble ha is a natural stone and you have maintenance with marble I wanted to get away from maintenance I want maintenance free so that's why I went over to this porcelain man-made product because once you don't really you don't have to put sealers on you don't have to deal with maintenance which is a beautiful aspect of man-made tile. Now, uh, when it comes to tile, generally speaking, a man-made tile, there's two different tiles that we all know about. It's ceramic tile and porcelain tile. My battery went dead. I had to change out my battery. Actually, I had to plug it into electrical because I didn't have a spare battery. All right, so anyways, let's move on. So I was talking about, uh, the, there's basically two different types of tile that everyone knows about, which is ceramic tile and porcelain tile. Ceramic tile is usually the most inexpensive tile, and then porcelain is more expensive. Porcelain is got three times the PSI rating th that ceramic tile has. PSI rating means that if you were to drop something like a glass and you were working with a floor tile, it would um, the porcelain tile would be three times less likely to chip than the ceramic tile. Ceramic tile, so in other words, ceramic tile is a lot softer tile to deal with. My porcelain tile is so dense that when I tried to cut it, now there's, I had a couple different blades on my wet tile saw. I had the blade, the fact, the blade that came with it that was sold with the rigid saw. Um, and then I purchased a special blade for the the glass mosaic because that blade, the original one that came sold with the saw, did not work with glass mosaic tile. You have to treat that tile separately. Um, when you try to cut the porcelain tile with the, with the rigid blade that came with it, you got this really jagged edge that you needed you could clean up with a file or with a um, a sharpening stone or, or a stone like that and you could try to make it better but when I used the blade that I used on the um, on the glass mosaic tile for the porcelain you got a real crisp line the problem is is that the blade got embedded with the porcelain tile material so quickly that uh, I, uh, when I was, I think, 40% through the shower, I, um, the blade wouldn't really go anymore. So I, had to, so I tried to clean the blade using a very coarse stone such as a brick paver, and that helped, but it really didn't help for long. Uh, lessons learned, I probably should have just purchased five blades. At 30 bucks, it was 30 bucks a blade. I should have just purchased five of them and just did or, or whatever how many blades it took, but let's just say hypothetically it took me five blades. Just blow five blades so I can have nice clean cuts and I don't have to keep messing around with it and trying to keep the thing, you know, maybe extend the life out of a little bit. But as soon as it's too difficult to deal with, forget about it. By the way, when it comes to, I told, I've told you I started out with the QEP uh, 650 XT $80 saw. Then I went to the $300 rigid. Uh, I wish I would have purchased the $450 saw at Lowe's, which is a cobalt 10 inch wet tile saw. That one has a tray that flips out. When you work with a 12 by 24 inch tile, it has that tray for extra support on your very large format tile. That saw, uh, I didn't, I never operated it, but just watching the reviews and watching everything and, and the price point on that, and it, has, it comes with a stand that collapses that looked like a real beautiful saw. If I'm going to pull the trigger and make a purchase on a saw in the future, it's going to be that saw. Uh, I think that one would be an excellent saw to purchase, and I regret not buying that saw for my tile job. I had so I had a few things working against me. I didn't have the experience to know, 
how long blades should last and I'm trying to keep my costs down and I'm trying to be, you know, uh, I'm trying to get, you know, the whole job done with one blade. Um, and I, so I shouldn't have been so tight with that. The second thing is, is um, I would have been better, so I, I could have been better off there and I would have been better off with that other wet towel saw. Another thing that I did wrong with this tile is I treated this glass mosaic basically the same as I did this and expecting the same result. That was a mistake. The glass mosaic, you cannot install. I, when I was doing the 12, uh, the 12 by 24 inch tile, my trowel was half by half by half. You can't use that trowel on the glass mosaic. You need to use a very thin one with a highly modified thin set mortar. And the way and what your goal is, is you're trying to get this to be flush with your, your finished surface. What I should have done was I should have purchased one quarter inch wonder board, put that directly in back of the strip right here, cure that to the to the to the, the original Wonder Board, 7 16 inch Wonder Board, so it's laminated together like this, then, and then just glue with a, with that, with a, I don't know, maybe a 1 8 inch notch trowel, um, just that section, and then put that glass in, in that section alone. That would have brought it out flush, and then used wedges to make sure that I had all the proper joints uh, everything lined up properly. The job came out pretty good, but I know it's not as perfect if I was a professional tiler as I should have done. So if I'm so <clears throat> in retrospect, I'm, you know, this is a lessons learned. If I was to do it over again, I would definitely do that. Another thing that I would do, I had one heck of a problem here in the niches. Now, let me just try to zoom in as best I can here. Okay, so you can see that in the niches, like this is just an example here, that I used the uh, quarter inch pencil round trim here and, you know, for the entire niche area. Well, in order to do this properly, you had to have a certain distance here in order so that both you know, on this, this edge and this edge had to be a certain distance for the pencil trim to fit in. And, and because, uh, I don't know, my measuring skills weren't that good, I was, the, the saw, I was having a really difficult time with that, with that wet towel saw. I mean, so everything was um, difficult for me, what, cutting, just cutting, because I kept trying to prolong that blade out too long, trying to be too cheap. Just should have put another blade on there and instead of going in that direction for if you're a first timer DIYer you probably want to go with the uh, Schluter metal for the trim right there uh, that would probably would be easier to um, line everything up a little bit better I probably should have done that uh, so that's another thing that I could have done and it would still look beautiful. It would be a different look It wouldn't have that radius look to it, but it would still be fine um, another thing uh, Let me think just for a second here about this tile job uh, uh, I guess that's it. I guess that's it on on the uh, on the tile job uh, Let me see what else. Let me just double check to make sure I went over all the other items here I tried to make the videos as best I could. Um, oh yeah, when it came to the, uh, okay, so uh, I told you that in step 14, which, uh, well, let's see, the, the final bathroom project, uh, let's see, I got, uh, there was miscellaneous hours. They got about 3.5 miscellaneous hours into the project. By the time you add everything up, the total job took me 231 hours and just giving myself a um, make-believe wage of $50 an hour uh, comes out to $11,550 in labor. So if I was to pay somebody $50 an hour and it took them as long as it took me, mind you, I, I know this, I was slow and I'm the homeowner so 
um, doing things that maybe a general contractor is not going to do. I did a lot of waterproofing on the, on the subfloor in here to make sure everything was just right. I don't, this is, it's not like I have the experience and the confidence uh, at backing me up here. So I know that I probably took two to three times as long as an experienced person to do it. Uh, another thing that made my life more difficult was that I'm working a regular eight, you know, day job here, working eight hours a day, so I'm chipping away at this one or two hours a day and a couple or three or four hours on a weekend, not even full days because I'm still enjoying my life doing other things. That's one of the reasons why it took so long. If I, did, if I was to focus on it full time and, get, and just focus on the job, I could have had it done in a much shorter period of time, maybe two or three weeks. Uh, mind you, I was all by myself. Oh, one other thing on the lessons learned, talking about the walls. Okay, so the text, you guys saw me, I did the, the, the texturing. This particular texture here is the orange peel. When I used that hopper gun, the orange peel texture was the easiest one to master, to get that one down. The more difficult one was the ceiling, which was supposed to, was supposed to be a knockdown. It's really, truly not a knockdown. It's somewhere between an orange peel knockdown finish, kind of. It's not a true knockdown. Um, and the only way that I could have gotten better at that is what I probably should have done is I should have bought one box of mud and dedicated that whole box towards practice outside with a tarp, with brown paper, and just shooting brown paper with um, playing around with the, 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 when it comes to the texturing, you got three things that you can play around with. You can play around with how soupy is your mixture, that's one. What tip you have, small, medium, or large on your gun, that's two. And what the air pressure is on your air compressor. So you have three things that you can mess around with that you can adjust and play. Oh, and a fourth thing, how close, when you're shooting your texture, you got your gun, and you're up against the wall right here, how close your gun is to the wall. That's another thing. So there's four things that you can kind of play around with to determine what the best mixture is in order, you like, you want a knockdown finish. Okay, great. You need to figure out what are the four components and, and what is your setting for each of those four components to get that down. And the only way to really do that is to know your setup, know your gun, know, know your air compressor, and know yourself to know what you can get away with and practice. So I probably should have purchased a box of mud to dedicate that towards that job and just practice that. Uh, so that was uh, on, the, uh, on the mud. I mean, overall, I'm very happy with the job. Um, I think it's, it's a beautiful, functional restroom. I purchased a shower curtain, uh, uh, which has a nice, um, like a marine background on it and I'm just not installing it because we don't need to use the shower right now and I'm just like looking at the tile in the shower but it's a fully functional bathroom the shower is ready to go turn the, the water on put the shower curtain on turn the water on somebody can take a shower bathroom is fully functional toilet sinks no leaks nothing and it looks I think it looks beautiful I'm very so I'm very happy with the the end result I'm very happy with the floor uh, purchasing sheet vinyl floor, no seams, no grout joints, no nothing. Um, and I'm happy with everything really. So, so uh, all in all, I'm glad the project is behind me and not ahead of me because it, you know, I mean, it's a big project. It took a lot of time and energy and effort in order to get uh, done. Anyways, I hope you like the series. Um, if you liked it, click on like. And um, my, I have a channel called Ken Training with uh, other videos, uh, different topics. I've got more of an air conditioning and uh, background and I've got some plumbing videos and stuff like that. Anyway, so I, I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Ken. Thank you and I will catch you on the flip side. Alright, so here is the uh, final walkthrough of everything. Here's the uh, wall that I removed the uh, door from. Did the uh, color match on the paint, came out quite nice. Put a new baseboard down there, new threshold right there, into the new space. There's your final product. 
when it comes to the, the vanity and the uh, medicine cabinet with the final medicine cabinet. Very beautiful. This is what it looks like on the inside. Nice medicine cabinet. Everything's fully functional with the, uh, the drain, the water, and also that there's no leaks or anything underneath. It's, uh, all your plumbing and everything is in really good condition. And then this particular one, uh, I have a new uh, shower curtain ready to go on there, so it's a fully functional shower. Um, so this particular one's got the, uh, the doors. It's got a drawer underneath, um, and uh, over here is a nice, how big, everything is full extension. Also with these ones here, full extension, really nice. And uh, I got this one at the Home Depot for $1,000. That was, that was a lot of this project. Um, there's your finished floor, nice Glacier Bay dual flush toilet and tub with shower surround with the uh, glass mosaic and two niches and a soap niche down there and uh, that's that's pretty much it that's it for the final product just give you a, an overview